Well, welcome again to another Q for Teams, Champions Using Teams Effectively. If this is your first time, which I think I see all the names I know, but uh, welcome uh, here to just bring your questions, geek out with us on Teams and collaboration in general. Um, and, uh, you know, call this an office hours or an ask me anything, ask us anything, and, um, you know, we'll try to help. Um, a little sidebar, you know, I know just a few, a few weeks ago, we celebrated, uh, the hundredth episode of this series. Um, given that today is August 4th, I want to also celebrate today's my 23rd wedding anniversary. I'm kind of just putting it out there on the video. So, so I can prove that I didn't forget. <laughs> I can give her a URL. To, That's, to right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Happy anniversary, Ricardo. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. So, since since we're since we celebrate anniversaries here, I figured I'd throw that one in there. So, I'm love it. it. <laughs> Nothing to do with teams, though. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, uh, have added on the chat um, if you uh, you know have questions, and then of course you know we're informed. We'll come off mute, raise your hand, however you want to do it. Uh, if you want to talk about something in particular. I know we we review the inspire stuff. I mean, there's you know, there's every every time we come to this meeting, there's a ton of announcements that have occurred since we last met. So it's kind of hard to keep up with all of that. Um, and then, of course, balancing the uh, commercial versus uh, uh, government and that kind of thing. Um, so we do our best. Um, but yeah, if you got any questions, start start throwing them in there. Um, and I see Glenn. Uh, thank you for the congrats. And also, would you show us the new settings, devices, camera, green screen uh, settings? So that is a good, let's see. So is that in the GCC? Let me check this one here. Um, uh, well, actually, let me go to settings for settings, devices. Uh, and it's not, at least not in my tenant here. Um, does anybody have it? it? But maybe by a show of a thumbs up, have it in their GCC tenant. I'm going to switch over to my commercial one. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, yes, we, we have a group. Oh, uh, hi, it's Glenn. We have a green screen setting there under camera. Okay. When I click on it, I get like... Um, and an ink bottle, but I can't make it work. I can't yeah. get. Uh, I, I've seen demonstration pictures of the green screen background, right? But uh, and we do have the green screen choice, but I can't get it to work. And I, I wonder if my demo environments don't have it because the environment knows I don't have a camera or any of that, or, or if the client knows I don't have a camera. But you're right, there is a green screen checkbox then brings up your your camera thumbnail preview and that uh that that ink drop is um you know so you know it is assuming that you've got a, a green screen behind you and then you're supposed to use that ink drop to point to a color on that green area to to let the client know that's the thing i want to make transparent so I don't know if that's clear that, you know, that green screen button does not work without a green screen, an actual green screen behind you. Um, hopefully that part is clear. Does that does that make sense, Glenn? I, I didn't. I did not know that. Thank you. Yeah, I did yeah, not know so, that. Thank you. So um, and that's, that may be something I can actually show uh, maybe next time, I, like literally turn my camera on it because I actually have a pull up green screen. Um, so maybe I can show that in some kind of way, but yes, it is assuming you actually, so, so at that point you're getting your whole team's meeting and you get, you're getting your whole production down because now you've invested in a actual screen they, and they have different kinds um, of different varying prices, depending on how you want to do it. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be necessarily a green screen, but it is a, some kind of background of a solid color. And then that's when that ink, uh, drop can be you know clicked on whatever that solid color is behind you to help with the uh, transparency and what it does uh, a little better than your typical let's call it custom background or blur 
as you as you, we all know, that works pretty well. I mean, uh, both Stacy and I are using it right now. But with enough movement, you see the little halo effect as AI is trying to uh, continue to uh, give that image of you know of kind of you know your whole profile. The green screen is very crisp and clear, like just like uh, you know the weather person on TV with the green screen, right? You're not seeing that halo effect. It's a very, and I have done it on. You, you guys may have not have even noticed it, but I've used it um, in my video feed on this meeting a few times in the past. Um, so it should just be a very clear, uh, non-halo looking kind of um, uh, uh, look to it. So it is valuable from that sense if you want to kind of present yourself in the best way possible during your team's meeting, especially if you're presenting. It's great for that. Um, uh, but it but it does require a green screen or you know a, a screen behind you uh, for that to work. Um, so so good call out there. Um, yeah, I, I imagine not many, especially in a work environment. I mean, people are going to have that green screen, but um, you know, folks like me that are on so many so much and doing the streaming and everything, I certainly have that kind of set up, and and that button works really well for that. So good call out, and hopefully I helped by kind of confirming that you actually need a, a screen for that to to work. Outside of the green screen, you know, there's still just the normal custom backgrounds, um, for which uh, I guess if you stand really still, then it'd be the same as a green screen. <laughs> like if you don't move, then you should get that halo look. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, if anybody has uh, used the green screen or has a green screen, you know, got any comments there, uh, be interesting to hear. Oh, and so Rebecca says we we have it. Uh, you really do need a green screen yeah, for it to work properly. OK, so you're saying you're confirming you have it in GCC. And yes, um, yeah, without it, without a screen of some kind, it will look it will really look bad. So you would not use it at all without some kind of screen behind you. Otherwise, it'll it'll look worse than just doing a normal custom background. So yeah, good deal. That being said, uh, I, I like, well, certainly I like the feature because I already had the green screen and I got lights and all that good stuff. But to me, it's also a, uh, a kind of a statement of, um, you know, how many of us want the best possible production when we're presenting or being a presenter in a meeting, right? We uh, we, we either, you know, ring lights and, and, and now green screens and all those kind of things, um, even things like using uh, spotlight in a meeting, right? Uh, it, it's a testament to how we want to have the best possible presentation. So make the presenter screen as big as possible, as clear as possible, um, you know, as well lit as possible. Um, I think we even have on the roadmap, if it's not there already, uh, you know, an up uh, increased frame rate on screen shares. You know, if you're like showing video and whatnot, I think we're trying to increase that frame rate. I, I, I can't remember what meeting I was when I was talked about, but again, that's for better production as we're either showing video in uh, PowerPoint um, and you don't want that choppy look. I think we're trying to help there. So it's, it's just a, a, a testament to how we understand you want to you know, the best look, the best presentation possible um, when we're doing these meetings. Um, so it's good stuff. So yeah, I don't, yeah, don't have a way to show that in either of my clients here. But again, my clients don't have uh, cameras or video, or, uh, cameras or microphones. So that might be part of the problem. So I checked in my um, browser teams because it looks like the roadmap has an update to loop for GCC in teams. Mm. You don't have it in your client there, do you? I don't. However, well, yeah, I, I haven't turned on this environment in a while, so that's why I'm checking for updates now. But yeah, yeah as, of, as of right here, I don't have it. We'll see what happens if I uh, let it update and sign out and all that good stuff. Um, any anybody on 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 the line with confirmation of seeing any new loop components in their client? Oh, actually, I take that back. I read it too fast. They actually pushed it out, uh, not okay. pulled it forward. <laughs> okay. Doggone yeah. it. Yeah. 
I read that as 2023, not 2024. My gotcha. bad. Yeah. I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> Talk on it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, at least I, I, you know, uh, what do they call it? Clear as kind, right? Uh, at least, yeah. uh, at least they're being um, practical yeah. and you know realistic about it. So. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, I, I know as as more gets pushed out in the commercial, I certainly have no problem, you know, in this group um, showing the commercial just kind of kind of can see what what to expect. Um, I don't think there's anything new since the last time I showed like a quick two minute demo of it. Um, but always happy to to dive into that if if needed. to clo close and reopen the client just in case Maybe something new and uh okay where i feel like that's not my teams Swear. yep okay yeah so definitely no no loop in there so in in, in theory that it's been removed Maybe across the board. I know it it peaked up in uh, Outlook for a hot second there. Um, here. Uh, go here and here. Trying to see if the button, yeah, I don't see the button really anywhere. And I'm not seeing it. Yeah, so they've, seems like they removed all, all appearance of it from where it used to be. So, so we'll give it some time. Um, you know, uh, while I'm here, uh, also the, um, you know, you, you got two kind of new clients trying to make their way to your desk these days, the new teams, um, uh, and then the new Outlook, uh, which I think what I'm using here is actually just Outlook in the browser, which isn't quite the same. Uh, have I even done Outlook? Outlook here. Let me try that. But I was just wondering if anybody has been trying the new Outlook. I know got some that are uh, holding off as much as they can and really like the desktop, you know, the what we will call what we're starting to call classic Outlook. Um, I am a huge fan of new Outlook and even web Outlook. But uh, curious if anybody else out there is switch to it so this so this is actually a, i don't know if you could see the little pre on there but this is the new outlook which looks very much like the um web but uh it is more it's kind of in between the fat client and a web client because it is windows will treat it like a you know a, a a fat client and uh default mail client and those kind of things but yeah i could go yeah, on and on and touting to some of the value there you have to be like us and and open to change in order to <laughs> embrace some of these um, uh, progressions of Outlook. And yeah, I also use it as my daily driver in the browser, um, really have taken to it. I think it's pretty full, full fledged. There's only a couple of things that I do in Outlook that have required me to use the client. Um, but they're more just because I communicate with um, marketing-ish material and have to, you know, use OFTs and things. I think in general, I can do everything I need to do from Outlook in the browser, and I've really enjoyed switching over to that. Um, I'm big about limiting context switching. It's one of the reasons why I think Teams is so phenomenal, and so I um, I like having all my browser tabs open and just toggling and hitting my my email there 
And uh, Glenn is saying they're about to switch over to New Outlook. Oh, um, looking for good. tips. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the biggest tip I would say is kind of embrace the change. You know, I, I will say that, uh, you know, there's going to be a small list of things that, um, you know, classic Outlook does that I haven't haven't made their way, may not make their way. And then there's also a list of things that New Outlook can do that, that um classic cannot um and those are the ones i would really embrace um you know as you're, as you're trying things out the the main sticking point i have heard people bring up which uh, i don't know what the good answer is but you know there are folks who have a lot of either add-ins or you know those those kind of uh, uh you know some third-party software kind of that has an add-in into cl classic outlook for which there may not be a um uh a way to do that in new outlook and so like if your workflow really depended on that add-in then that's when the, you know new outlook maybe would be painful for you uh, outside of that though as, as stacy was just saying the majority of what you can do is there uh as as stacy mentioned that was one of the main things i was having trouble with was just the whole oft or msg you know email files how are they gonna open up i feel like lately and maybe this is just an internal but i feel like lately my new outlook has tried to open them um and that's also been made easier as they start to deprecate for those that either used or were, were aware of the windows kind of built-in mail app i think it's called mail and calendar app or something like that so it was kind of a windows store version of mail that one could use if you weren't using outlook and that's going to be deprecated, replaced with this new outlook as well. And I, I feel like as that has moved along, my new outlook has been more uh, uh, willing or seems like it's more willing to try to handle those uh, OFT files and things, um, or at least the MSG. I don't know if, what the main difference is there. But in terms of tip, uh, you know, embrace the change, I would say. Um, you know, I, I do know I was talking to somebody uh, I do feel like new Outlook uh, freeze, does not freeze up or slow down like classic Outlook does. I, uh, as having used it now for months and months, it kind of dawned on me that, hey, the the especially the startup of classic Outlook when it's starting to kind of merge or what is it, sync up all the accounts. I'd gotten used to that with classic Outlook and then I had to realize I don't have that phenomenon with new Outlook. Um, uh, it doesn't have to like take two minutes to get back up to speed. Um, so it's been pr been pretty reliable. Um, in terms of in terms of documentation I'm seeing in the uh, in the uh, chat there, I, you know, I suspect there is some something on support.microsoft.com. I haven't checked, um, but I suspect there's got to be. Um, and then probably this guy, uh, da, 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 an email. Yeah, so these might, uh, uh, usually they kind of call out. So that's clearly got a classic look. Um, a lot, oftentimes they call out when it's a new version here. So yeah, I'm not sure if there's a whole, you know, repository of things specific to new outlook we certainly look for that though um, but as i've mentioned in there before oh, okay and then uh stacy just put in a chat getting started with new outlook so there you go you're on mute stacy for my go. um my little uh microsoft speaker that i just hit the mute button on decided not to unmute it for me <laughs> um anyway this article that i put uh, refers to the new Outlook, so I'm assuming it's the right one. It doesn't have a published date, so we're going to go with that. Um, but I think it, it has a nice table at the bottom talking about the comparison between Outlook on the web, Outlook for Windows, Windows Mail app, and then the new Outlook for Windows. So I think that's really going to help you when you're trying to figure out um, what adjustments you need to make when you go to that new Outlook. So let me just call out the parts of this that I am in love with and why I, I probably likely will never go back to classic Outlook. Pinning emails, so key, um, basically so that they stay at the top of that particular folder. 
Um, and that, when combined with uh, flagging it and turning it yellow, is is really key for me. Something I need to really uh, uh, conversation. I really need to track snoozing. I think a couple of sessions back, I, I gave you all a whole spiel on that. I'm in love with snoozing emails. That is so so much a part of my workflow now. Um, obviously, loop will be a, a big deal as that, as that uh, comes out. Just kind of going through uh, some of this here. As you can see the com add ins. This is still a problem, or you know, still working on that. And then I was trying to come up here. So scheduling, uh, I don't think that. So so you can certainly schedule an email in Classic Outlook by way of I think it's the delivery options button. You go in there, you put the date in where it says don't send this email before this date, something like that. And that's been in there a while. But it's a bunch of steps to do it uh, in new outlook. It is a part of the drop down schedule sin and it gives you some pre uh, it, it actually kind of suggests some good times to send like tomorrow 8 a.m. or something. I can't remember what they are, but you can tell it exactly when you want it to send. Um, I'm a big proponent of that, even in classic Outlook days. I'm just a big proponent of making sure you send an emails at a time that is appropriate for the receiver. And you, if you happen to be working at seven o'clock at night, you know, I can I, I make sure I send my email so they hit the person's inbox at 8 a.m. There's no need for it to hit their mailbox, you know, this evening. If I don't expect anything till tomorrow. So I'm a big proponent of scheduling emails and and uh, uh, this makes it uh, easier. In addition to I believe it's Viva that is also that has also recommended me to do this too so I, I was doing it on my own anyway but if you're not a sent a schedule send person viva starts saying hey you, you know this you might want to send this at 8 a.m you know blah 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 so that's another big one that the, the the modern features of new outlook is really really calls out um yeah so penny yeah this was actually talking about all the stuff i love so the pinning the snoozing the scheduling um I mean, categories are in both. I'm not sure what the. Uh, oh, OK, uh, making a category as a favorite. I don't know. I guess that's not in classic. I don't I don't really use that. Um, I might I might have to try that, though. That's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah. And then if anybody else has got and then uh, I think the other one might be the the the, the integration of to do. I'm thinking about classic outlook and uh, I know you could obviously you can flag something that goes into to do. I was trying to think about the integration there versus new outlook, but being able to drag an email over to the to do area and turn it into a task um, is pretty nice. So it gives you an additional option other than just flagging an email. Um, and uh, yeah, and then the ribbon is uh, is nice, uh, a little more streamlined as well. So um anybody else with any 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 pros or cons you know it's a new outlook that you know, you know might help glenn and his team as they're about to launch this um timeline i think i think you should be seeing the the button for switching today right um which uh I, I did show earlier was on the upper right corner. Should, should be a new team's switch box, switch checkbox. Um, so that should be there today. Yeah, we do have somebody in the chat that loves schedule send as well. Oh, schedule send in Teams chat. Yes, I, I love it in Teams as well. And for that, we're talking about, um, uh, you know, doing a message. I think uh, you right click on the, uh, the, the, it's the send button, send it as a, at a scheduled time. I agree with that as well. That is awesome because, again, even chats, I might be working at seven o'clock and I want to do a chat, but I don't want it to hit you to the morning kind of thing. Um, or or I've also uh, used it when I can uh, see somebody's out of off their out of office message shows when they're coming back. I'll schedule it for that time um all that good stuff so again it's just about it's one about being respectful of the other person's time it's also valuable for you you want your message to be seen at a time when they're going to read it and act on it and so the best way to do that is to send it at some time when you know they're you know they're in their inbox 
um, versus maybe when they're if they're in a meeting or something, why, you know, why bother? They're, they're probably going to be distracted anyway. So. Yeah, this has come a long way. This used to be kind of a power automate uh, uh, approach to scheduling and now it's native and uh, works a lot better. Uh, because because for one, you can send the full fidelity of the message. This could be a message with full blown screenshots and everything else, and it'll send all of that. The the old school method was would just send text, uh, which wasn't quite as cool. Um, Glenn says they do see the button for voluntary switching over. Uh, whole organization will be upgraded to new outlook in the near future. Yep, good deal. I think if there was any other uh, feature of uh, Outlook to call out. Uh, one more thing I'll call out that for those of us that use categories, you may not, and I don't know if this is in um, classic Outlook, but um, okay. Let's get that out the way. Let's say I put a category on this one, like purple category, right? I, I do categorize a lot of my stuff. So my calendar is very colorful and the colors mean something to me. Customer meetings versus internal meetings versus just tasks and things. Um, but you may not have known about the filter up here to filter on categories and then only show me the purple, especially in the month view is where I like this. Because then, as I just mentioned, if I've got a color for a customer X, I now have a view to see, show me all of customer X, all of my customer X uh, events and meetings with all of the rest of my meetings, you know, taken away. So, um, um, and of course you could take it off and now you're back to everything else. So I, uh, I've recently kind of learned about this, this filter button and using that as a way if I'm focusing on one specific thing that I have a category for that I filter out and get that view. Um, and there's obviously other filters I can show here too. Maybe I only want to see all the meetings I'm an organizer in, things like that. So that might be something to try out as well. Looks like Stacy's taking some notes there. <laughs> I am 100%. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. And I'll say it will be a little bit, but as soon as I hear GCC and Copilot um, mentioned with any sort of confident confidence in a date, you'll hear it probably here first. <laughs> I'll be the learning I could look up on the side here and see. So for I the purpose of the see. video, yep, there's comments about asking about Copilot and Viva Learning in the in the chat. Um, stuck. Let's see if uh, yeah, no Viva Learning there. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, for the, the last little few seconds here, anybody else have a burning question or anything? Uh, in the room. Go ahead, Glenn. Uh, yes, I don't know if this is unique to our organization or a problem for everybody, but one thing that we found with the the future, the delayed delivery, which I I really like that feature too, but we found that if you at least on you know the old Outlook, if you click delayed delivery, it's like cached on your individual yep. pc not That's on right. the server so if That's your right. pc is off at the time that you wanted it to actually send it yep. won't send yep. so do you know if this might be different in the new yeah, version I, i'm pretty sure this is different um because that's a good point. Uh, you, you're right. When I when I did do delay delivery, I just had to make sure that things stayed on all night. As far as I can tell, this does not suffer from that. This must be cloud based because uh, it does not. Nothing's requiring me to keep. I, I've not had any issue with a schedule send based on my client being off or you know closed. So that's another key value. Oh, good. Yep. 
Awesome. Should have shown the custom time there too. Uh, so the su suggestions, and then you can tell it outright. Now I can't say 8.04 a.m., but if I'm getting that specific, uh, I got a different problem. Um, but other than that, at least at every half hour, they give you times. So, and the last thing I'll say here in, the, in this few seconds is because of this, sending messages to yourself is also another pro tip. Uh, it's a tickler. I don't know how many, you know, GTD getting things done fans there are out there, but if I have a email to myself or, or maybe some email, yeah, mostly an email to myself that I want to be reminded of 8 a.m. on the 24th, I send it to myself with the schedule with the schedule time. And now it comes up that morning as my reminder. I can certainly put that reminder in a bunch of other places, but I like seeing it as a new email in my inbox. So consider the schedule sends even for emails to yourself as little ticklers or reminders of things you need to do. Awesome. I'm well, glad to see everybody again. Um, we will rock and roll with this thing in a couple of weeks. Um, so we'll keep the uh, aka.ms slash cute for teams link updated. But um, otherwise, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the blog for more content.